With the town growing and with people coming in, uh, I think they saw a need to get a, a concentrated, compact, organized group that could do the things that a lot of people were trying to do on their own. And they banded together and got behind the efforts to uh, create the chamber and to make it prosper. Independence Chamber of Commerce was that stimulus that brought people of influence and of means together because the Chamber can do for you what you can't do for yourself. One of the most significant events has obviously been Harry Truman. I mean, how do you not connect Harry Truman and independence? What are cities that can say that a president actually was born and raised and walked the sidewalks here in our community and you can retrace those steps. Truman is listed among the five best presidents we've ever had, so it's a pretty nice honor for independence. Of course, the history, the, the Truman legacy here, the Truman home, and the Truman Library uh, is going to continue to uh, bring a lot of people here that normally wouldn't come. There's been tremendous growth over my uh, experience within the city, which started in 1949 when the city was only 26,000 people. It's no longer a small town. It's uh, it's become a great community and will continue to grow. Before the chamber really had an official office, we had our meetings in uh, what is now the Courthouse Exchange on the south side of the Independence Square. Sandy Caligon was a big thing, particularly for me having the restaurant. You know, it brought a lot of people to the square and it it helped business and it was it was kind of good for everybody. Not only do they provide a, a fun event for family and friends to come out, but it's a, a fundraiser for them to continue to raise funds to provide opportunities for businesses and uh, individuals in the community. The greatest thing that I think we accomplished was building two industrial parks, AID industrial parks. The city was very helpful in the independence chamber was very helpful in securing the land, and those two parks now exist. I think that was a great accomplishment that my predecessor, Luzon Maxwell, started, and we were able to finish it in his term. I was involved with a lot of things as first, you know, Hope House and in the foundation, the community foundation, which is now Truman Heartland. It was hard in those days. It was hard because it was, it, women were just not accepted much in, in, in leadership positions. 
I think, you know, I tried to pave a way in a good way for women to come behind me. I think it's come a long way for whatever reason. I think there's more women involved in business. I think there's more women involved in the community. And uh, we've had some great leaders. I feel we've become a lot more diversified. It seems like we're on a roll of women in leadership positions here at the Chamber. It was a wonderful experience. It was a life-changing experience for me to be chairman of the board. And the chamber was really the key for me. I really took to the chamber. I was one of the board members for the LEAD, which was a great program for youth. Some of them weren't so young, they wanted to take that program. I've always had a good time with all of it, though. And this great building that we're standing in was, was significant, too. The Free Enterprise Center was, that was a really exciting time. When we raised a uh, million dollars in pledges, we named it the Free Enterprise Center because of the fact that we wanted to give the message to the community that, that it was not just about chamber activities, it was about free enterprise and independence. So much has been accomplished by the chamber and, and the city and other people coming to uh, together, the, the little blue parkway, for instance. And then we had to get it financed, and we did. And that was probably one of the biggest accomplishments. It, uh, the center of independence is out there. <laughs> I work at Main Event, which we also have Bass Pro and um, Silverstein, and so much has grown just around that I-70 corridor. years, decades, independence, the Western independence had been struggling because that portion of our community was in the Kansas City, Missouri School District, and which was horribly performing district, and even worse, the independence portion of the Kansas City District got even the worst treatment of all. And so they asked a lawyer to get involved, and so I did, but most importantly they asked the chamber, will you take the lead, because somebody has to be out in front. And so the chamber said, we'll take the lead. And then it was the chamber's job to bring it all together, to spirit it forward, to be the collecting point for all of that momentum. We got the law changed. We got it on the ballot. It passed overwhelmingly. And since that time, uh, Dr. Hurl keeps telling me it's the most historic transformation of, a, of an area for school education he's ever seen. It's truly been one of the best things I've ever been involved with, and the chamber was integral in making that happen. became involved in the chamber with, uh, on the Santa Callaghan Fair Board that really grew and grew and grew and became part of, of the city fabric. With the McLeans and others, it, the square has uh, become a go-to place. The square has gone from nothing to a most amazing place. It's a tourist villa. The square is the heartbeat of the city. It's the center of the city. And without it, you just can't have a healthy city. And so it really became our passion to keep growing and just get that heartbeat back. It's, it's a revitalized independence.